Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, Bashem Rakakudash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, who uh, I learned this truth from. And uh, peace and blessings to the elect of Israel out there that's pushing this word in all truth and sincerity. All right, this lesson is going to be called The Value of Wisdom and Virtue and Discipline. All right, because, you know, I, I was <clears throat> kind of meditating upon some scriptures while I was reading. You know, I was hanging out with Sophia, so to speak. And, um, you know, I was just kind of got caught up into and started writing down all these scriptures to form a lesson. Uh, I'm going to start by, you know, reading Isaiah 33 and 6. I don't have it highlighted. Uh, it says, And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure, right? Because, you know, I'm going to be talking about the uh, the value of, you know, wisdom, virtue, and discipline, and all of it kind of goes hand in hand, all right? Because when you start, you know, reading the scriptures, you obtain wisdom, all right? When you read into the law, uh, when you read stories, uh, you know, you kind of uh, understand how to conduct yourselves in certain similar situations that, you know, a prophet might have went through or a king might have went through, uh, whether they were a wicked person or a righteous person. You know, if they were wicked, then you know what not to do. If they were righteous, then you know what to do. So when you get all that wisdom and knowledge, uh, it, it, it stabilizes your spirit, man. So when you're put in those certain situations, you're stable, all right? And ultimately, you know, we, we, you know, watch videos, we do lessons, we do, we have homework and so on and so forth so that, you know, when the time of Jacob's trouble and that hour of temptation is presented unto, unto us, you know, we know how to conduct ourselves. We know what's coming and we know what to do, you know, call upon the name, pray fast, you know, all, all the things that, you know, the in times past uh, have done. That's why wisdom and knowledge is the stability of our times because um you know all those people like the world teaches you that you know money uh land all these resources will be you know the stability you know a bitcoin uh fucking you know whatever it is they say this is going to be your stability this is reliable but really it you know the scriptures tell you that rich is corrupt all right um which brings brings me next to my next point i'm going to grab uh proverbs <clears throat> and these are just simple scriptures that I'm going to run through. Uh, Proverbs 8, 8 and 11. All right, it says, For wisdom is better than rubies, uh, and all things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. All right? Because, you know, you can't really compare anything to wisdom. All right? You know, it's far greater than rubies. And, and a lot of people use this example that wisdom is better than rubies, you know, or riches. Because, you know, when you have wisdom, you know how to obtain those things. If you just have money, then you're going to run through it. All right, but when you have wisdom, you can multiply that money. But I don't really like to use that example because, you know, wisdom isn't supposed to be compared to it, you know. Like the scripture just said. Um, <clears throat> because... Uh, I'm going to go to Sirach real quick. I'm going to come back to Proverbs, though. Uh, Sirach, <clears throat> or Ecclesiasticus, uh, 10 and uh, 22. It says, Whether he be rich, noble, or poor, their glory is the fear of the Lord. You know, so I mean, you're, you're going to have men of the Lord that might be well off, more well off than others. You know, and they might have, you know, a little bit of dough or whatever, a little bit of resources that they can, quote unquote, rely on. But the curses are still on them, so they can't really, you know, the, the, their glory isn't in the riches. You know, they, they might obtain wisdom and know how to operate and handle and manage resources, but they don't glory in that, that type of wisdom. All right, they glory in the fear of the Lord. You know, whether he be rich, noble, or poor, their glory is the fear of the Lord. All right. Uh, <clears throat> it says, It is not meet to despise a poor man that hath understanding, neither is it uh, convenient to magnify a sinful man. You know, and that goes into, uh, you know, envy not a rich man, 
for you you don't know his end um, you know things of that nature you know man cannot serve both uh, manna and, and and God so to speak you know you, you can only have one master and, and you know they if they have that righteous spear of the Lord on them and they're obtaining this kind of wisdom then their glory is going to be in that. It's not going to be in whatever they had. Um, I'm going to jump down to verse 30. All right, Ecclesiasticus 10 and 30. It says, The poor man is honored for his skill, and the rich man is honored for his riches. He that is honored in poverty, how much more in his riches? And he that is dishonorable in riches, how much more in poverty? All right, that, that one kind of hits hard, man. Because, yeah, we're, we're in a poor state right now. But guess what, man? Guess what? I'm going to get uh, James. <clears throat> this is James chapter 2, verse uh, 5. Uh, Hearken, my beloved brethren. Hath not the Most High chosen the poor of this world, uh, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom, which he hath promised to them that love him? You know, he, he says, you know, the Most High has chosen the poor, you know, chosen the lowly, all right, which is Jacob, Jacob on this side, man. You know, Jacob is the poor one. Even if you do have millions on top of millions, you're still serving Esau, man. Those are still uh, FRNs, uh, uh, you know, slave points, all right, wage slaves. Um, it says, uh, 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 rich in faith. You know, rich in, rich in the wisdom, rich in the faith, rich in virtue, rich in discipline, all right? Because they know how to conduct themselves, man. They have those spiritual gifts to, to you know, make it through in whatever situation that they're in. That's the true value of wisdom, all right? That's why the scriptures say this. Um, uh, going back to Proverbs chapter... 20, uh, uh, no, I'm going to get chapter 16 first. Proverbs 6, 16 and 32. It says, He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he that ruleth his, his spirit than he that taketh a city. All right? And, you know, quick uh, uh, precept to back that up. Um, Proverbs 25 and 28. It says, he that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without a without walls you know because you know you got one person that has that self discipline and you got one person that doesn't the one that doesn't is like a city with no walls all right anybody can come in and take whatever they want and persuade that city and take it and rule over it all right but the one that has that self discipline said it's mightier than one that taketh a city all right it's because he knows how to uh, 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 spot out. Uh, you know, they have that spiritual discernment on them. They know they can see through all the bullshit. They know if somebody's sincere or not. All right, they they know, you know, what people's motives are from the get go. Just because you know they they pray to the Most High Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, you know they they seek it not after themselves, man. They they're seeking they're doing the Lord's work, man. And when you do the Lord's work, the Most High is going to watch out for you. He's going to start giving you those spiritual gifts to, to, to you know, those, and man, the, these, this wisdom is basically, is like a spiritual power, man. You know, knowing how to operate in the midst of, of the, the valley of death, that's the value of wisdom, man. Um, let's go to Psalms. I got one Psalms. Okay. Uh, this is Psalms. Um, it's like it. This is Psalms 119 uh, and 105. It says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. All right. Because it, it, it says, uh, uh, I, I have sworn and I will perform it that I will keep the thy righteous uh, judgments you know because it says the word is, is a light on to my uh, socket 
me read it again. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. You know, a lamp unto your feet. That's the light, man, on your feet, man. You know, wherever you walk, you got light. You know, you're not walking on any dark paths, man. You know, the light's going to shine you, telling you where to go, how to walk, how to, uh, you know, conduct yourself. You start to know your purpose clearly. All right? <laughs> Because apparently I said that in another video and, and you know, brother uh, really liked that statement. Um, you know, you when you start, you know, learning this, you start to see your purpose more clearly, right? Uh, I have sworn and I will perform it that I will keep thy righteous judgments. You know? Because we, we like being a, a slave or, or a servant to Yahweh Bashinah Shai. All right, because he's a good master. All right, you know you like to work for somebody that takes care of you. All right, you don't like working for Esau, man, because he he treats you like shit. But <laughs> we're slaves to the Most High, and we love being slaves to the Most High. We love not being able to uh, uh, eat shrimp, pork, crab, and lobster. You know why? Because when we do it, we create a healthier body. All right. When we perform the righteous judgments that the Most High puts on us, we become healthier in, in spirit and body and, and, and everything, man. You know, that's why there's a whole part. The, the first part of Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter, is the blessings that come upon you when you start doing the, you know, keeping the commandments. Uh, I'm going to get uh, Wisdom of Solomon. Four, yeah, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 1. Better it is to have no children and to have virtue, for the memorial thereof is in, is immortal. You know? Because, you know, people like to say they, they want children to carry on their legacy. You know, because, you know, it's like a chip off the old, old block, you know, a chip off the shoulder, you know, so to speak. Chip off the old man, I should say. Uh, that's how the saying goes, the chip off the old man, you know, because, you know, you, you, whether you want to admit it or not, you carry a lot of char characteristics of your father, even if you never knew him, you know, that's how it's a spiritual thing, is it, that's how we know it, your birth line goes through your father, all right, because I, I, I've heard stories of people uh, never knowing their father, and then once they meet him, they realize how, how much alike they are, and not even knowing each other. Uh, but it says, Better is it to have no children and to have virtue, for the memorial thereof, thereof is immortal. So having a good virtue about yourself is going to last longer than any kind of kids, you know, you're, you uh, uh, might have a reputation of what their father is. Uh, because it is known with God and with men. You know, it's known with Yahweh Bashim al Shai and with men. You know, people recognize uh, 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 a virtuous person. That's why in the Bible, you know, you, you can go around the world and, you know, people know who Moses is, know who Solomon was, King David, you know, Yahweh Shai. They may not know the name Yahweh Shai. They, they, they know the character in the Bible, all right? You know, they might call him Jesus, but we know his real name is Yahweh Shai. Um, they, they might know the story of Samson. Of uh, of Noah of of Adam, all right? Because those were virtuous men. Yeah, they had their slip ups, but ultimately, you know, they 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 were they they had some kind of virtuous uh, about them, and they know them for that. Uh, also, uh, who was I gonna say? I don't know. It slipped my mind. I was gonna name another. Uh, a prophet or something but it just slipped my mind um i'm gonna keep reading it says but the multiplying brood of the ungodly shall not thrive all right so these are talking about the wicked people that want to leave their um uh, uh reputation with their kids it says but the multiplying brood of the ungodly shall not thrive nor take deep root rooting from bastard slips nor lay any fast foundation. And that word fast meaning like 
you know, like you fasten your seatbelt. It's not a, a, it's not held down. The foundation is not held down. All right. Uh, or, or, uh, for, for though they flourish in branches for a time, you know, they multiply and they spread quickly, right? Yet standing not fast, they shall be shaken with the wind. What wind do you think that's talking about? It's talking about that nuclear fire, all right? Or just, you know, it, it represents a power, you know, a, a force. Whether it be the most high, you know, sending a plague through, uh, uh, sending armies through to wipe out that family or whatever. But ultimately, in this time, it's going to be those nuclear missiles. You know, that wind is going to come through. Uh, and through the force of the winds, they shall be rooted out. All right, so all these ungodly people, even though that they, they seem like they're flourishing, all right, they're multiplying, and they, they, they're better off. No, man, because if it's not right, the Most High is going to take them out, bro. All right, but with the righteous men, they, they're going to have that, they're going to have that value. All right, that's why the scriptures say, uh, they, they compare, uh, that's why the scriptures say, I will make a man more precious than fine gold. All right. Uh, that's why Isaiah 4 and 1 says, And that day seven women shall take hold of one man. It's because it, that, that value is going to be brought out of this. You know, Zechariah the 13th chapter, you know, bringing us through the fire and becoming gold. You know, e even the uh, uh, in Revelation when it talks about the kingdom of heaven, it talks about uh, the, the roads paved in gold, the, the 12 different stones uh, of the 12 steps. You know, and how, how all the, these, you know, the, the 12 gates uh, of, that you enter into the kingdom are going to be pearly and white. And, and that, that's even symbolic of, you know, the men of the Lord. Because what do the scriptures say? Uh, it says, uh, don't think low here, low there is a kingdom. For the kingdom of heaven dwelleth with inside you. All right. With inside the elect. All right. Um. Because, because, you know, th those are those virtuous metals, man. There's wisdom and, and, and virtue, you know, self-discipline, self you know, or really I should say how Bashim al Shai discipline, right? Because the disciples were disciplined to, to subject themselves under Yahweh Shai, all right? So, I mean, if we come in that same spirit, then we're going to have, have those same things, man. Oh, Slucky, so I, I skipped uh, verse 2. Wisdom of Solomon 4 and 2. This is <laughs> this is what it's about, man. When it is present, men, or I'll, I'll start at verse 1 again. Better it is to have no children and to have virtue, for the memorial thereof is immortal, because it is known with God and with men. You know, how Bashim al Shai and with men. When it is present, men take example at it. And what did it? And when it is gone, they desire it. All right. When a virtuous man is about it, you know they they take heed to it, man. All right. But when it's gone, they want it. They want it back. <laughs> uh, it weareth a crown, and triumpheth forever, having gotten the victory, striving for undefiled rewards. You know, and I, I can jump to a uh, 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 one of. Uh, Apostle Paul's uh, uh, epistles, when he talks about how a a crown is laid up for him, he's fought a good fight, and he also s talks about uh, uh, you know athletes how they strive for a corruptible crown, but we an uh, uh, immortal crown. You know, Th those immortal jewels, those immortal uh, precious stones, is having self. It's having a uh, 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 Shai's righteousness in you, man. Those are the precious things that you should be looking for. All right, now I'm gonna read, you know, the, that Ecclesiasticus again. Um, Ecclesiasticus 10 and 22. It says, <clears throat> whether he be rich, noble, or poor. Their glory is in is the fear of the Lord. Alright? So no matter what state you're in, you know, if you're sick, if you're going through hell, or if you got a lot, don't glory in any of it. Don't glory that you, you came out the mud or whatever. 
Don't don't glory in the fact that you made it through the day. Glory in the fact that you have fear of the Lord, that the Most High is dealing with you, that you're that you're obtaining Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. All right, and give give thank you give glory to the Lord. All right. So with that, I'm gonna say Kol Halam La Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, and uh, uh, you know. Rock a thumb to to uh, the elect out there, man. Keep 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 studying, you know. Keep keep pushing these videos out, cause you know we're at the end, man. So shalom.